Tomo News presents Rocks from Space. Scientists predict a giant asteroid will collide with Earth in 2880. The asteroid 1950DA is a rock 1.1 kilometers in diameter. It's traveling at about 15 kilometers per second relative to the Earth. Following its current trajectory, it has a 0.3% probability of colliding with the planet. If this occurs, it would slam into the Atlantic Ocean at 61,155 kilometers per hour. It is estimated that the force of the collision would be equivalent to 44,800 megatons of TNT. Asteroid could get a little too close for comfort to Earth next month. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory announced on Tuesday that an asteroid could pass very close to Earth next month. It will not, however, smash into our planet this time. Asteroid 2013 TX-68 will make its closest pass by Earth on March 5th. The asteroid, which has a diameter of 100 feet, could pass as far out as 9 million miles or as close as 11,000 miles. There is no chance it could hit the Earth this time, NASA says, but there is a 1 in 250 million chance it could hit the Earth in 2017 on its next pass. Even if it does hit the Earth, it is too small to cause any real damage. It would likely break up in the atmosphere and blow apart in an explosion from an incoming asteroid called an airburst. NASA says the asteroid was discovered on October 6, 2013, and tracked for three days, after which it could not be observed. Because scientists were not able to track it longer, it is hard for them to predict its exact orbit around the Sun. They are sure, however, that it will not hit Earth this time. NASA scientists say that an unusually large and fast asteroid will narrowly pass Earth. Scientists at NASA's Pan Stars Observatory in Hawaii say that an unusually large and fast asteroid will fly by Earth this Halloween. The asteroid, named 2015 TB145, came as a surprise to scientists who only spotted the asteroid less than two weeks ago. Asteroid 2015 TB145 measures up to 2,000 feet long in diameter, or the length of approximately five and a half football fields. The asteroid's flyby is expected to happen on October 31st this year, when it will pass within 310,000 miles from Earth. That distance is within 1.3 lunar distances of Earth, dangerously close for an asteroid of that size. Scientists say that the asteroid will streak by Earth at an unusually high velocity of nearly 78,000 miles per hour. NASA says that if an asteroid of this size and velocity was to hit Earth, it would wreak devastating havoc on our planet, but rest assured this will not be the case, at least this time around. Scientists say the next time any celestial object this large will pass by Earth will be in 2027, when the mile-wide AN-10 asteroid passes by within one lunar distance away. A large asteroid is scheduled to narrowly pass Earth on January 26th. An asteroid is currently approaching the Earth, but will safely fly by on January 26. The half-kilometer-long asteroid has been designated 2004 BL86. Asteroid 2004 BL86 will be so large and close to Earth that we'll be able to see it through small telescopes or strong binoculars. The asteroid will fly by Earth within a distance of 1.2 million kilometers, a small distance in astronomical terms. This will be the closest an asteroid gets to Earth until asteroid 1999-AN10, which is expected to fly past Earth on August 7, 2027. Although there is no threat of impact at this time, if asteroid 2004-BL86 were to hit Earth, it would create a crater with a 10-kilometer wide diameter. Don Yeomans, retiring head of NASA's Near-Earth Object Program Office at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena, California, told The Guardian that scientists hope such a close approach by such a large asteroid will allow them to learn more about asteroids. NASA has a plan to save Earth from an asteroid Armageddon. Let's hope it works. NASA announced a plan on Wednesday regarding a future mission to change the trajectory of an asteroid. The mission may have the potential to protect Earth from an impending asteroid impact in the future. NASA's Asteroid Redirect Mission, or ARM, scheduled for the mid-2020s, involves sending a robotic spacecraft to an asteroid passing by Earth. The robot will then do a series of flyby optical surveys of the asteroid's surface. The robot would then land on the asteroid for the boulder collection portion of the mission, which would last about 10 minutes. After pushing away from the asteroid and three days of analyzing the boulder, it will then begin the planetary defense portion of the mission. 
Using the gravitational attraction between the spacecraft and the boulder, they will attempt to deflect the asteroid, a process they call enhanced gravity tractor. It will then take about six years for the robot to return to lunar orbit, where astronauts aboard the Orion spacecraft will dock with the robot and further study the boulder. The current concept for the manned portion of ARM involves two astronauts and is expected to take about three and a half weeks. Huge Asteroid to Skim Past Earth A huge asteroid called 2014 YB35 is set to skim past Earth on Friday. Asteroid 2014 YB35 is believed to be 1,000 meters wide, the same as the height of the Kingdom Tower currently under construction in Saudi Arabia. The asteroid is set to approach Earth on Friday. Traveling at more than 37,000 kilometers per hour, the asteroid will barely miss Earth, according to a trajectory map released by NASA. At its closest point, it will be 2.8 million miles away from Earth, about 12 times the distance between Earth and the Moon. It's estimated that a collision with the asteroid would result in an explosive force equivalent to 15,000 megatons of TNT, which would trigger earthquakes and tsunamis and cause destruction on a global scale. NASA is closely monitoring the passage of asteroid 2014 YB35 in the hopes of obtaining data about its composition and size. Japan's Hayabusa 2 spacecraft begins its journey to collect samples from an asteroid. Japan today launched Hayabusa 2, a spacecraft designed to retrieve samples from the surface of an asteroid. Its target is asteroid 1999JU3, which the JAXA Space Exploration Center says is thought to contain organic matter and water. The Hayabusa 2 is roughly the size of a refrigerator and has twin solar arrays that power four ion thrusters. Two antenna on top of the spacecraft are used to communicate with Earth. Hayabusa 2 is scheduled to arrive at asteroid 1999JU3 in 2018 before returning to Earth in 2020. The spacecraft will fire projectiles at the surface of the asteroid to create samples to bring back to Earth. The crater created will be roughly a few meters in diameter. To land on the asteroid, Hayabusa 2 will fire one of five target markers that will provide fixed reference points for the spacecraft to land. Hayabusa 2 will also be carrying a mobile asteroid surface scout, a probe that will take measurements of the asteroid surface with a magnetometer, a radiometer, and a camera. The asteroid Hayabusa 2 will land on is known as a C-type asteroid, which NASA says are the most common type of asteroids found in our solar system and are also among the most ancient objects that exist in our solar system. U.S. nuke agency says it needs stockpiles of uranium to defend the planet from asteroids. The United States recently gave an interesting explanation for why it's holding on to stockpiles of enriched uranium that's used for nukes. The National Nuclear Security Administration says the nukes might be needed to defend the planet from asteroids. At last check, the U.S. possessed over 5,000 nukes, but under various treaties, the amount of uranium the U.S. holds is supposed to be shrinking. Hollywood has already solved this problem, but the U.S. nuke agency says landing a drilling crew on an asteroid is not possible, even if the team contains Bruce Willis. They claim the best hope for planetary defense would be to have a nuke nudge away any big rock headed towards the Earth. But what do you think? Is the U.S. really trying to save us from Armageddon, or is this just an excuse to hold on to its enriched uranium stockpiles? Brilliant meteor spotted in Texas night sky. NASA has unveiled a $17.7 billion budget plan for 2014 space exploration projects. NASA's new mission plans to capture a small asteroid and park it in a high orbit near the Moon. A solar-powered robotic spacecraft features a bag-like snare to enshroud the asteroid. 
Astronauts would then visit the space rock using NASA's Space Launch System rocket and Orion capsule. The Orion space capsule would depart from the rocket and chase down an asteroid parked around the moon. Astronauts spacewalk their way to explore the asteroid surface and collect samples. The Orion spacecraft would come back to Earth with the samples retrieved from the asteroid. The Orion spacecraft would land in an ocean splashdown. Yale scientists have confirmed the object that burst through a roof in Connecticut last week was, in fact, a meteorite. The space rock, about the size of a grapefruit, is estimated to be about 4.5 billion years old. Larry Beck was relaxing at home in Walcott, watching TV and not expecting visitors. As the chunk of rock hit the atmosphere, it broke up and created a loud sonic boom heard in towns miles away. Some worried residents even made 911 calls. A little after 10 o'clock, Beck heard a loud bang overhead and saw pieces of his ceiling caving in as the rock got caught on a copper pipe. Beck figured a beam had come loose and didn't realize what had happened until he checked it out the next day. He and his wife are still trying to figure out if their insurance covers space rock damage. Incredibly, this is the third meteorite to hit houses in the state since the 1970s. U.S. space agency NASA has chosen the rocket that will launch a spacecraft that will study and collect samples from a near-Earth asteroid. The OSIRIS-REx satellite will launch atop an Atlas V rocket from Cape Canaveral in 2016. It will intercept the 560-meter diameter asteroid 1999 RQ-36, shown here next to the International Space Station two years later. There, the probe will spend up to 500 days mapping the asteroid's surface and taking samples. The samples will then be sent back to Earth in a heat-proof container, arriving in 2023. According to NASA, the mission will help officials understand the physical, mineralogical and chemical properties while assessing the resource potential of the asteroid. The annual Persaid meteor shower is due to reach peak intensity on August the 12th. The Persaids, which radiate from the constellation Perseus, are debris from the Swift-Tuttle comet. Sighted in 1862, the comet's orbit passes near that of Earth. It takes 133 years to complete a single orbit, with its second observation in 1992. Earth passes through Swift-Tuttle's debris cloud at the same point in its orbit every August. The nucleus of the Swift-Tuttle comet is 26 kilometers across. Swift-Tuttle is the largest solar system object that ever approaches the Earth other than the Moon. A massive asteroid set to fly past Earth on May 31st will give scientists a great opportunity to study an unusually large space rock. The asteroid, known as 1998 QE2, measures 1.7 miles long, about the same length as nine cruise ships. It will be at its closest point to Earth at 8.59 p.m. GMT on May 31st, at a distance of approximately 3.6 million miles or about 15 times the distance from the Earth to the Moon. The US Space Agency NASA said anyone possessing a radar telescope of 230 feet or larger should be able to see the asteroid. The NEOSAT is a space telescope designed to search for near-Earth asteroids. It can also be used to monitor space debris and satellites. The $25 million NEOSAT is positioned 800 kilometers above Earth. It orbits the Earth every 100 minutes. The NEOSAT is able to take images of objects as close as 45 degrees to the Sun, an area difficult for ground-based telescopes. The NEOSAT will operate around the clock during the day and night times. It will also monitor orbiting space objects in order to minimize collisions. The NEOSAT can also track specific space objects in orbit. When a meteorite enters the Earth's atmosphere at high speed, friction between the meteorite and the atmosphere causes the meteorite to heat up and melt, forming a fireball that can reach temperatures of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The meteorite can explode in the atmosphere, creating a shock wave. The meteorite that fell over eastern Russia on Friday morning exploded at an altitude of 10 to 20 kilometers, creating a shockwave that injured hundreds of people. 